Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm in the process of giving our home office a complete makeover and the first project on the list is to refurbish these French doors. Every single door in our house is white and boring so I thought this would be a great opportunity to add some character. Here's what the doors looked like before and here they are after the transformation. I stripped all the paint and added glass to the doors, which I got cut right at Lowe's. I found some really cool antique hardware to replace the knobs, and I stained them a deep brown to add some character to the space. Check out the description below for tool and material links. Let's get into it. First things first, I removed both the doors and brought them out to the workshop. I also removed all the old hardware that had been painted over a few times. I'm going to try and clean some of this hardware and what I can't clean, I'll replace it with new door hardware. Here are the paint stripping products that I'm going to try out. This is my first paint stripping project so I had to buy a few specialty items. I've heard great reviews on this citrus strip. I like that it doesn't have harsh fumes. I coated the entire door in citrus strip, let it soak in for the recommended time, and then started scraping off the paint little by little. There are at least three layers of paint on here, so it looks like I might need to do another round of stripper, but this top layer of thick white paint came off super easy. I don't recommend using this out in the sun. The sun will dry up the citrus strip pretty fast. Another option is to cover your project with saran wrap while the citrus strip sets in, allowing it to penetrate the paint better. To get in all the small grooves, I used this contour scraper that has a ton of different attachments. This is what the doors looked like after one round of citrus strip. I'm going to do one more round and see if that does the trick. I followed the same steps for the second round of citrus strip and we can finally see some wood grain. We still have quite a bit of paint on here, so I'm going to get out the pressure washer to see if I can remove any more paint and also to get rid of all the gunk from the citrus strip. I don't recommend using a pressure washer on a really nice piece of furniture. You risk damaging the wood and warping the wood, but in this case, it took off so much paint, I didn't have any damage or warping, so this saved a bunch of time. Just be sure not to spray too close to your surface. Next up is sanding. I used my orbital hand sander with 80 grit first on all of the flat surfaces. Then I came in with this little detail sanding kit to get in all the small grooves and edges. I was only going to cut out the top four recessed panels, but then I decided last minute to cut out all the panels, which means I wasted a ton of time trying to strip the paint in all those little grooves of the recessed panels, but that's okay. I think adding more glass will look better. I used tape to outline the panels and to prevent the wood from splintering. I used my drill to drill holes in each of the corners of the panel so that I could fit my jigsaw there. Then I took my jigsaw and cut out all the panels. My cuts weren't perfect, but I will be covering them with trim, which will make sense in a little bit. After all the cutouts were made, I grabbed my sander one more time to sand the inside of the panels. Mm -hmm. 
Now it's time to add trim. I'm going to use this half inch by half inch quarter round trim on the inside of the cutout, sandwiching the glass. And I'm also going to use this tiny detail trim to trim out the face of the panels and to hide those ugly cut edges. I measured all the openings and cut the trim to size, making sure to miter each of the corners. Here's a close-up of the trim. The quarter round will go inside the cutout like this. And then the detail trim will frame the face of the cutout like this. I set the quarter round in about an eighth of an inch and then used wood glue and one inch brad nails to secure it. For the detail trim, I used wood glue and 5 8 inch brad nails to secure it. I'm using an 18 gauge brad nailer, but a 23 gauge brad nailer would have been better with how small this trim is. Here's the side profile of the trim. On the other side of the door, I will attach the other quarter round like this after the glass is installed, and this quarter round will hold the glass in place. On the other side of the door, I attached the detail trim, but I waited to attach the quarter round until the glass was in, but I cut all of the quarter round down to size and set it off to the side for now. With the trim installed, I filled all the nail holes with wood filler and then sanded the wood filler once it dried with my detail sander. One of my doors already has a cutout for a doorknob, but I wanted to add a knob to the other door as well, but this one won't function, it'll just be decorative. So I used a one inch bit to drill this hole. I used this gel stain by Verithane in the color Kona. There's tons of wood variation going on here, so I went with a darker gel stain. It's super thick, so it will reduce the blotchiness and even out the color nicely. I applied the stain with a brush and let it sit for five minutes and then wiped it off with a rag. I also stained all of those other small trim pieces that I will add later on. I let the gel stain set overnight and then applied polyurethane. I did two coats of polyurethane, sanding with 320 grit in between coats. Next, it's time to install the glass Lowe's will cut glass to your custom dimension. They have a few different sizes of glass in stock to choose from. The largest size is only 30 by 36, so keep that in mind. I dry fit all of the glass to make sure all of my openings were big enough. I had the glass cut about an eighth to a quarter inch smaller than the opening. To secure the glass, I applied this clear adhesive to the back of the quarter round and set the glass in place. Then I glued the back of each of the quarter round trim pieces, set those in place, and secured them with a few brad nails, making sure to angle my brad nailer enough so that I don't shatter the glass.
I follow the same steps for each panel. I used a small paintbrush to get gel stain in all the brad nail holes to conceal them. With the glass installed, now we can install the door hardware. I found this hardware at a local antique store. And then I bought some new hinges as well. I spray painted some screws and some old hardware to match the new doorknobs. Then I installed the door hardware. Last but not least, Devin helped me install the doors. I cleaned up the glass nicely and voila, we have some beautiful antique looking French doors. This adds so much nice character to our home office. I have so many other projects coming up in the home office, including a coffered ceiling, built-in library, and wall molding, so stay tuned for more great projects to come. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and for daily project updates, go find me on Instagram at homewithstephanie.